And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said to him, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. What other prophecy of Micah 5 2, which tells of Bethlehem as the birthplace of the born king, the Messiah, then concludes, whose going forth have been from of old, from the days of eternity. Is this a description of a mere man, or indeed of God who condescended to be a man? I quote from John's Gospel 1724 concerning his existence when the world began. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. Let's take note. Now the most familiar passage in John 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. Now in the future, I'd like to say to you, to confirm this truth, listen to the wisdom of Solomon in Proverbs 30 verse 4. Listen. Who has ascended to heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If you know, where is the answer? Or what is the answer? Jesus our Lord, 10 centuries later, gave us the answer in John 3:13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. The Bible states that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. A title reserved only to God. In the last book of the Bible, we are mystified at the revelation in 118. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Verse 17 and 18, the same chapter. And when I saw him, John says, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Do these incredible pronouncements Prophecies and proclamations sound like this supernaturally born Jesus is just a man or truly incarnate deity. God is omniscient, all-knowing. A great number of my learned listeners tonight know the story of the Samaritan woman found in John 4. Why was she convinced he was what he told her, the Messiah? He said to her, you want this living water? Go bring your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. He looked straight in the eye and said, you spoke the truth. You had five and the one you have now is not your husband. She said, ah! she was terrified, ran back to town. And what did she say? Come see a man who told me things that I have ever done. Could this be the Christ? And they found he was the present. Some of you may remember the story of Philip. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Only God knows the unknown. How did Jesus see Nathaniel when no one else but God saw him? The future. Jesus predicted his betrayal, his crucifixion, his death, his resurrection in such minute details that even the disciples themselves overwhelmed could not for a while believe him he also predicted peter's denial three times his most faithful follower 
He accurately described the destruction of Jerusalem, which took place 37 years later. And in addition to that, he told of the end of the world and the conditions leading up to it, which we right now, tonight, in London, all over the world, are experiencing. Even in what we call the Lord's Supper, Jesus predicted his death for sinners, resurrection, and second coming. Can anyone, in clear conscience, intellectual honesty, and in the pursuit of fairness, say after these clear proofs that Jesus was anything but God in flesh? Even the Quran testifies that Jesus is the only person who knows the hour of judgment. Matthew's Gospel, we are told that the wise men of the East came to Bethlehem. You see, God is to be worshipped. Listen to this. When they came, they asked, Where is he who is born king? Strange that they call the child king instead of the proper title prince. At any rate, we discovered in verse 11 of Matthew 2, They saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him, not Mary. I encourage you, my dear friend, to recognize that wise men still worship him. The three gifts, gold representing him as king, frankincense representing him as God, myrrh representing him as dying for us as savior. Even demons recognize and worship Jesus. Mark 5, 6, 7 tells us of the story. But when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, son of the most high God? In Luke 20, 41, we see several facts. Among them, the worship offered Jesus, even by his enemies. Jesus is speaking. And he said to them, How can they say that the Christ is David's son? Now David himself said in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. David, therefore, calls him Lord. How is he then his son? According to the ninth chapter of John, Jesus healed a young man born blind. Then we read in verse 35 through 38, the exciting end of the story. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking to you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Let me present your inquisitive minds and seeking hearts with a glimpse of who Jesus is according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and following. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him and he is before all things and in him all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the first born from the dead that in all things he may have the preeminence god is also omnipotent all powerful who in the world has power over nature and the elements. You say, of course, God. Then tell me, please. Tell me, please. Who was Jesus when he stilled the storm over Galilee, according to Luke 8, 22? And what about his walking over the water? Mark 6, 45. After that, he's going up to heaven, defying gravitation at the conclusion of his earthly ministry of redemption, according to Acts 1, 4 and following. Elijah was taken up in a chariot, my friends, a chariot of fire. But Jesus went up on his own power because he could do it. 
power over life. In Matthew 21, 18, following we read, Jesus had power to annihilate. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, remember he was hungry because he was a man. He chose to be a man. He was a perfect man, a perfect God. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. And said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. And immediately the fig tree 